I've teamed up with GoCar. Let me tell you why. Ireland has more cars on the road today than we've ever had before. In fact, three quarters of a million households have two or more cars. That doesn't sound like the future of driving to me. Car sharing takes cars off the road. In fact, GoCar asked 4,000 of their members, if GoCar didn't exist, would you buy yourself a car? 60% of them said they would. If you want a cost-effective and convenient way to get around, download the GoCar app and discover the smarter and affordable way to move. I'm joined by Karina. Karina, thanks very much for coming in. And I know we spoke the other day on the phone and we had a bit of a chat. And the reason why I think the listeners, viewers, whatever way you're consuming this is, the reason why I think they'd be interested in your story is because you've made a big leap. Mm -hmm. You've gone from full-on PAYE worker, payslip, and now you've gone out on your own. Isn't that right? That's correct, yeah. And you're going out as, and actually, tell me yourself, what, 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 what jump have you made? What have you gone into? Yeah, so I suppose historically I was working mostly in community development for the LGBT community and would have done a lot of volunteering in that area as well. So I guess I've seen a bit of a gap in the market in terms of event management and event planning for different events around the country. So I've gone into that um, as well as offering uh, training and workshop delivery around LGBT inclusion and diversity in the workplace. So, yeah. so, so is it fair to say that you have gone from a role doing certain things within a role that you were getting a pay slip each week or each month for and you've recognised a, a, a gap in the market for you to go into it. But you're more or less going to be doing the same job. It's just you're doing it for yourself now instead of for somebody else. Is that fair? That is fair. Yeah, yeah. I have more flexibility and control now, which is part of the reason I wanted to do it. And also because I see an opportunity there. Okay. And um, tell me about that the decision process, though. Is that something that you sat on for a long time? Did the opportunity jump at you in the face and say, you have to do this now or you're never going to be able to do it? Tell me about the, that decision process to give up the stable income and to take that leap. Well, I suppose it was, a lot of it was for personal reasons. Um, I guess around Christmas 2022, I lost a really close friend. Right. And I went back to work in the new year and I just had that decision-making process around what do I want to do now? I love that whole new year, new me kind of thing anyways. Mm. Um, so at that point, I decided to leave my job and I went to Australia for three months. Um, okay. Went for the Women's World Cup, but also to do a bit of travelling. And it was during that time, I put a lot of effort into thinking about what I want to do a lot of research. I wanted to stay working in the LGBT community and that's when I was thinking about, well, what opportunities are there? And it's then I came up with the idea for my business. Okay. Um, so I came home in October, got very quickly into building my website and my business plan and all that. Yeah, and I've just kicked off now in January. Okay. Um, Do you so mind yeah. telling me a little bit about your friend who passed away? Was it was it sudden? Yeah, it was very sudden. Uh, my friend Dave back home, um, really lovely guy, just got very sick over a couple of days, ended up in the hospital in Limerick and yeah, just passed away. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, no, it was it was a big shock, but I think it also motivated me to look at my life. I, yeah. I have a thing around that, you know, I love that, uh, what's not saying, but memento mori, you know, remember mm. you will die, remember that. And mm. I suppose to use that as a motivational piece. Um, and I, I transferred that over to my work life and kind of thought about, well, he didn't have these opportunities. He kind of always stayed back home in Clare and he wanted to move on and do other things, but he didn't. Um, so I wanted to use his debt, I suppose, as, as terrible as it sounds, to kind of kickstart my life to go in the direction I want to go. And yeah, I think I've done that. I think I've done that very successfully by starting the business. What do you think he's saying to you now? Well done. Right. Well, well, absolutely well done. Yeah, he'd be delighted for me. And mm. he'd probably be joining me up in Dublin if I ever move back. <laughs> it's interesting because there is some research out there that says if you believe in a higher power, now I'm talking about a God of whatever yeah. whatever um, origin you want to put it on, right? That you can achieve more. Mm -hmm. Okay, it doesn't I'm not picking any God in particular, but you can achieve more. And I kind of, whatever about my own religious beliefs, right? I have some people in my life who have died along the way and I can see a connection there where you're kind of going, you talk to them in your head. What would they say to me? If they were here right now, what would they say to me? And it can drive you on and it's obviously driven you on to make that big leap. Did it make it less scary or was it still really scary? Do you know, it did make it a bit less scary. I think I just felt more motivated, you know, mm. think, considering the shortness of life and all mm. that. But um, it was obviously still scary. The main part of this the fright being around the financial aspect of it and the insecurity. That is the thing about being the PAYE worker is that you know at the end of the week how much is coming in and you can plan your life around mm. that. Whereas I don't have that now. Okay. So that was probably the most frightening bit. And tell me about it. You, so you've literally, we are now sitting the second week in February. You've been independent on your own since what, the 1st of January or 1st of October? Uh, 
I've, since mid October, I've been on my own, but I've okay. only really I considered January my start off point because that's when I started pulling in income. Okay. I wasn't doing it before Christmas because that was the build up of the business. You know, okay. the website, as I said, the business plan. I had oh. a mentor through the local enterprise office as well, oh, which is great. Yeah, yeah. You really found helped. that useful, did you? I did. I found it very useful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you got your website up and running. You got your first check in January. What's the diary looking like now? Are you fairly full up? Are you, have you got a bit of runway in front of you? Uh, I'm very full up, I think, until the end of June, which is the end of Pride Month. So it's a big season, I suppose, coming off. It used mm. to be Pride Day, Pride Week, now it's Pride Month. So I, I love it personally. Yeah. Um, I've won big event in August, but after the end of June, I don't have much. But I suppose I also find it hard to plan what I'm going to do because I'm so busy now. I have okay. so many projects that will keep me busy until the end of June. Um, but yeah, I guess... I don't even have time to consider that, to be honest. And what's the biggest surprises to you? I know you're early on, but what's the biggest surprises that you found when you've made this, whether it's emotionally, what rent space in your head? What is it that you're kind of, whoa, I wasn't expecting that? Probably the support I've got from the LGBT community itself and the interest in the events that I'm doing. I thought that I'd have to spend a lot more time. Like, I didn't think I'd be making any money in January, to be honest. Um, And I just think the support from other people has been immense. Um, and it was a really nice surprise. Do you know what's interesting? I'm going to make a leap here. You come across as someone who's incredibly positive, right? And that's great. And it's really nice to be, you kind of get a vibe off someone that they're a very positive person. Give me a negative. A negative going yeah. into business. Oh God, okay. Well, I can go back to the financial aspect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you find that hard when you were waiting like you were two and a half months with no check and you got your first check in in January? Did you find that difficult? Had you got rid of reserves before I you? Had, had your... I had reserves. That's my buffer. That yes. I suppose I wasn't, Great. didn't really want to be spending. I suppose it's what I had considered in the past to be my mortgage is the money I'm saving up for a mortgage. And again, when I went through this whole midlife, early midlife crisis, I decided that I'm actually not anywhere near buying a house, won't be buying in the next five years, and that I can actually use this money for other things. Um, so I was happy, absolutely delighted then to to invest. I consider it an investment in the business. Um, but I'm also living back home in the family home in Clare, so I don't have the same expenses I would if I was moving back to Dublin, which is something I want to do. And did you move back to Clare because of your friend David and the change that that came about or was it to support you financially to start the business? No, I was already back in Clare because I moved back to doing my master's okay. a number of years ago and then I got a bit of work down there and I was supposed to move back to Dublin. It didn't happen. Okay. Just a different job. But yeah, after Australia, my initial goal was I'm just going to move straight back to Dublin when I come back from Australia. Then obviously I decided to go into self-employment. So mm-hmm. that didn't happen. But it's still top of my list is to, Get back just to in Dublin. terms of work opportunities and my social life, to be honest, um, yeah. I want to be back here. Okay. Um, when you obviously got some support from the local enterprise office and they, I like, I have to say anybody I, I know who's engaged and I've done some work with them over the years as well, but they, they just really know what buttons to press in terms of how to drive you on to point to shine a light in certain areas to say you need to be considering this. If you were able to, if you think about your whole setup process over the last three months, if you were able to talk to yourself three or four months ago, what would you tell yourself? In terms of what would I do differently or? yeah. yeah. Well, I'm telling myself I should have started sooner, which probably isn't positive Great. feedback. I wish I had um, started sooner. It'd probably be, I could have done some events in the, in the build up to Christmas. I think I spent too much time making little tiny changes to the website and my business plan, all that kind of stuff. Was rather that than procrastination just doing, or was it? Probably a bit of procrastination and a bit of fear. Yeah. And because of the time of year it was, I was like, oh, no one would be interested in Anton before Christmas. But like, look, I, I, I could have trialed something and seen if it worked. You know, I think I did hold off a bit much rather than just launching and just going. Yeah. Um, going with it. Were you doing any work, and I don't want to get you in trouble with your pro- pre- previous employer, but were you <laughs> doing any work outside of your nine to five, if you want to call it that, that you kind of were able to test the waters? Or was this literally you stopped one day and you started the next day on your own. How did it work? Uh, well, my work was in the area of LGBT community development, so yeah. it was quite relevant, but I also did a lot of volunteering. Okay. So like sports and health promotion is my main area that I'm really passionate about. And there's an LGBT sports organization called Sport and Pride, and I was mm. volunteering with them for years doing their event management. Mm. Um, so I think volunteering is a great way to get experience in an area that you're thinking of going into business in. And it and really network. helped me. And to network. And to network. Oh yeah, that's. I think that's why things have worked out so well for me in January as well because I know a lot of the people who I need to know already. So yeah, yeah it was fabulous. Did you do this change for money? No, definitely not. Definitely not. Do you think? It, <laughs> do you think it can work if you do go after it to do it for money? Do you think? Well, I'm take, talking about your advice to other people. Do you think if someone's thinking about going out on their own, they're thinking about doing it for money? Do you think? And you're a little bit early on to know this, but what's your thoughts on that? Oh, well, I think, to be honest, it's taken up a lot of my time. I'm working more hours than I did in my Monday to Friday, nine to five. So I think if you weren't passionate about it, that it's not going to work. Well, I wouldn't say that to everyone, but... And come back to the start, though, you said this gives you much more flexibility. Was that the Mm -hmm. word you used? Yeah. But yet you're working more hours. Because when you said that, I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't set up my own business um, 
20 years ago was I was in a partnership and then I set up my Prosperous in 2008. And mm. when you're working for somebody else and you're doing the job and then you end up uh, going out on your own, you think, oh, I'm going to have all this free time and mm-hmm. I control my own diary and everything else. <laughs> It's not true, sure it's not. No, it's definitely not. No, no, no. But I guess it's more flexibility and control and not necessarily more time. So I had an event I wanted to go to on Tuesday and I just decided I was going. You okay. know, it's I've, I've booked two weekends away that I really want to go and I don't have to run that by anybody. You know, I can plan around it. You know, even if I have to work on a Saturday and Sunday so I can take a Tuesday and Wednesday off, mm. I can do it. So it's the, the flexibility of it that I like, but the hours definitely um, have increased. Mm. Um, but I'm willing to sacrifice that because it's doing events that I love and delivering training on a topic I'm yeah, passionate about. Much, so yeah. it, it works for me. I do think though, one of the things that I think people can often fall into and I think you just need to make sure you control that, right? You need mm-hmm. to, because when you are a PAYE worker, you have a boss, right? When you're working for yourself, you have 50 bosses. Every client you have is a boss mm-hmm. and they can demand. Now, there is a little bit more, right? That Tuesday is important to me and I'm blocking it out and nothing's getting in there and you can take the control over that. But you do need to be careful about keeping that balance right and yeah. reminding yourself on a regular basis, this is, I'm doing this because I love it. I'm doing it because I want to, but I'm also doing it because I want a bit of flexibility in my life to do the other stuff that's important to me as well. Yeah. Yeah, oh no, that's definitely true. I mean, initially when I thought about work for myself, I was like, I'm going to work a four-day work week. Um, and that hasn't hasn't uh, worked out that way. But I suppose I would say I'm working six days a week with one day off every week at the moment, mm. but enjoying it at the same time. So mm. yeah, I do need a bit more balance going forward. But again, I'm, I'm hoping that'll come with time. Did you make a decision or did you just fall into it in terms of um, whether you went sole trader or a limited company or has anyone ever talked to you about that or what way you, what way you structured I am a sole trader. I would like to form into a, a limited company in the future, but I suppose this was just the easiest option right now because I was yeah. kind of on my own and I, I'm not fully sure about forming a company, but I think I need someone else, possibly. I don't know. Yeah, not not anymore. Not yeah. not as much as you used to have to have a big shareholder as, as, as someone who would have shares in the business as well, but you can have 100% directors now. And for, for people who don't know, have a clue what I'm talking about, when you set up a limited company, it's a separate entity. It's a separate legal entity. And if something goes wrong with the business, it's that legal entity, that limited company that is going to take all the responsibility there. So if you're going to get sued, it's the limited company gets sued, not you. As a sole trader, if you're going to get sued, it's the sole trader. It's you who gets sued. Um, but traditionally, the rules were around that where when you were setting up a limited company, you needed to have two shareholders in it. Now you can have a director who is a 100% shareholder. You do need somebody else who signs as secretary. You do need someone signatory on us, but the you don't need to give them any shares to do that. Okay, um, so it could be a friend or someone like that. It could be a friend. Yeah. There's a bit of responsibility involved yeah. in it. Um, you can pay for professionals either, but there is a bit of responsibility involved for being a director in a business. And But if you have a good friend who's happy to take it on, yes, there's no there's no legal requirement that they have to be of us, like that they have any background or anything in being a director. Like you can pick someone, whoever you want to, to vote on it, but just protect them and protect yourself if you do decide to go that route. Um, yeah. And what I would say is typically there's a bit more responsibility. There's a bit more requirement in terms of returns and everything when you go limited. Um, I do believe you take, took the right decision right now where you've got the sole trader, you work away, you're a self-employed individual, you work away. It's likely at the start that all the income that comes in, you're going to spend, um, whether it's on reinvesting the business or paying for bread and milk, you're going to spend it. Um, when you do get to the business or if the business does get to the point in the future where you have surplus income at the end of it, at the end of the year, I mean, um, with a sole trader, you have to distribute that income. With the limited company, you can leave it in the business and use it next year and the year after to keep reinvesting the business or to create a buffer for the business as well as yourself. So there will come a point if, if income goes up dramatically, there will come a point where you're saying, okay, maybe now is the time. To, to jump from the sole trader to limited company. And the accountant is always the best person to be able to give you guidance on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did visit accountant at the start of the year and I just told him I'm not considering that yet. But that's kind of, hopefully I'll make it through the first 12 months and it's something I would definitely aim for then um, because of that liability yeah. piece, you know. Are you good at tracking your expenses? Are you good at looking after that stuff? Uh, well, I've started well on the business account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got an Excel sheet and I just track whatever expense coming in and coming out is and how much is profit. Um I suppose I'm not tracking tax and stuff like that because I had thought that maybe I've got a sole trader business account now, bank account, that maybe I should open a separate account to transfer money into for tax purposes. Yeah. And then another separate account for my buffer. But yes. then I'm kind of worried, will it get all messy? My personal finances can be a bit messy in that way. So I'm kind of wondering, should I have 
Yeah, just in terms of tracking it, should I just leave it all in the one bank account? I it? would strongly suggest, particularly with tax, one of the things that catches people out really badly, particularly in the first year, but oftentimes in the 10th and the 15th year when they're well established, is the tax, right? So yeah. people see 100 euros coming into the bank account and the business bank, and it sounds like you have a business account and you have your personal account. Make sure that's that's first step two separate accounts you've done that already but make sure you're never paying for business stuff from the personal account and vice versa because once it gets confused once the account looks at it and says why are you paying for your grocery shopping from the business account and then it's harder to trust everything else that's going on in that business account and you'll end up paying more tax so you need to keep your personal and your business separate and keep yourself honest on that as well because sometimes people try and push the boat out a little bit and it just it, it's a trust thing that whether it's your accountant or whether it's the, a tax audit that you're going through if it all looks clean you'll be believed much quicker than, oh, there was a few mistakes and even if there were genuine mistakes. So keep them two separate. But I would say the big thing that catches people out is the tax. You get 100 euros lodged into the business account and you say, oh, I made 100 quid. No, you didn't. Like, you probably made 70. And I would be taking, like, 30% is over egging it. But I would say, like, if you think about really high earners in Ireland, they're probably on an effective tax rate of around 33%-ish. So for every 100 euros they have coming in, there's about 33% of it going out in taxes. Um, and that's, sorry, that's reasonable earners. I said high earners, but that's reasonable earners. That's what, it's in the, that's what we call the effective tax rate. You're never going to be disappointed at the end of the year, right? If you take 30 to 35% of everything that you earn and you put it to one side for tax, this time next year, you're not going to be cursing me saying, I have to pay my tax bill because your tax bill, remember, is not going to be due until October 12 months, right? And you're never going to be cursed to be saying, I have too much money here in my tax account, right? So just get used to it. Get used to having that much chunk taken out of you. Cover the tax bill when it comes, pay it on time and then go again. Because once you get used to, if you think about that 100 euros, if you get used to having 70, you'll get used to having 70. If you get used to having 100, you'll, you'll really find it hard to recoup that. And that's where people fall down big time is that first big tax bill that comes in. Okay. 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 So I can't, I cannot stress that enough that you need to be doing that and separate it off. As regards a buffer, it depends about your own mental math and your, in terms of if you're looking at the account and let's say, I'm just going to take a random number because I don't want to use your numbers, right? I take, and I don't know your numbers and I don't need to know your numbers. But let's say you've got 10,000 euros sitting in the business bank account. And you're saying, um, I know that it costs, like I need to pay myself each month, right? And I know that it's going to cost me five grand to cover each month, right? That means you've got two months run rate there. You've got two months of runway. If you've got 10 grand in the account, you've got two months of runway. You should really be, as an individual who's self-employed, particularly at the start, you're trying to get that up to six months, which is a lot, right? And you should actually be treating it the same on the business side and the personal side with the stage you're at right now, okay? Should, business, personal side, you're trying to get up to figure out how much do I need to, on your, on your personal side, how much do I need to live my life, right? And don't, don't fall short of it. Like you need, you're doing this because you love us. You're doing it for the flexibility. But you're also doing this to make money. Let's be fair, right? So figure out what you need on your side. How much do I need for savings? How much do I need? Work out all the personal finances and say, right, I need, and I'm going to use the number again, five grand because it's my number. It's not yours. I need five grand a month, right? And the first person who gets paid each month is you. And that's another mistake people will often make at the start. They'll pay everybody else and they'll pay themselves last. You need to be paid first because there's nothing it's really easy to let yourself off the hook, pay everyone else and find out in six or 12 months or probably even longer than that, I'm actually doing this for everybody else and getting out of it myself. Yeah. So I, if if the mental maths allows you to say, oh, I can see a 15 grand account, that's three months. Great. That's your three months. And then, But if the mental maths doesn't allow you to do that and you've got 15 grand, five grand a month run rate or burn rate, as we'd call it, I would be taking 10 grand out of that and putting it into a different account so that you're only ever looking at this month's expenses sitting in the business current account. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely does make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, for me, I think, yeah, I probably would want it a bit separate just the way you're explaining it there. I would like to just see in the bank account what's available to me at that time. Yes. Um, and I suppose, for for example, as I keep call it a buffer, but like I ran a retreat back in January. I had to pay the, the venue in advance and yes. it, that was like one and a half grand. So that came out my personal account buffer. Yeah. But I will be doing more events throughout the year that require me to have a big chunk of change available to pay in advance. But it will come back once the ticket sales close. But none of these ticketing platforms allow you to get money out until the event is over. Yeah. So that's, I suppose I consider that a buffer or, or maybe yeah. that's something that needs and, to stay in the account. And what I would do there, interestingly, the accountant would say it doesn't make a difference from an accounting perspective. But from your perspective, what I would be doing there is, is where the business needs money and you need to 
to, to give it to them personally, give it to the business, which is your sole trader. You are the business. But I would be transferring it from the personal account to the business account and then getting the business account to pay those advances of 1,500 euros or whatever it is. Make it really clear. That's money being introduced by you into the business and you're owed that money back. And when the ticket sales come in, you get paid back first. The money gets dropped into the business account and you get your 1,500 quid back first. And then you start looking at all the rest of the stuff. And I'm not saying for one second that you shouldn't be paying the stuff that you're due. But if you don't prioritise you, what you'll find very quickly is the income, you won't put the same pressure on yourself to generate the income. Because when you owe yourself money, you if you pay yourself first and you owe other people money, you'll put more priority in making sure that the other people are paid than you would pay, put it on yourself. So if you're looking at this and you're going, okay, I have a week left in the month and I have to pay that person a thousand euros and I haven't got it. Um, it's so easy to let yourself off the hook and take from the personal pay account and stick it into the business account and pay them. But if you have to go out and look for it, you are more likely to look for the, for somebody else than they are for yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does make sense. Yeah, so yeah, just yeah. make sure you don't get knocked down the pecking order. You are the most important person to get paid and then everyone else after that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things with your business that you have to pay for up front or else it just doesn't happen. And you need to be constantly thinking, trying to think ahead. The more runway you can get for yourself in terms of your burn rate, the better. Um, you will have some bigger decisions to make as you go along. Don't leave it too long to start a pension. Like you you really need to get that. You, there's no point in putting money into pension yet because you don't know what the tax bill is. But I'd be fairly confident based on a, a, a starting at zero that if you put 30, 35 percent away, when it comes to tax bill time, you'll be able to say, you know what, I've put 30 percent of my earnings away just to keep the maths really simple. I make up the number of 100 grand, right? Whatever, right? 30 grand is in this account, your tax bill might be 20, which means you've tend to go into your pension. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So I think from where you're at now, and that's not perfect for everyone, I'm not saying everyone should be putting 30% away. It might be a different rate for everybody, but that's a really good rate for where you're starting at right now. And I think it'll be too much in the end and I'm happy with that. Okay, okay. And that's something you said an accountant would help with or? Yeah, an accountant will help with that. For the moment, I think you just need to get through your year and see how you go. And every time money comes in, take that 30% and put it to one side. Try and find out what your burn rate it is. Put that into the account. Everything else above the burn rate for this month should be in another account. I'm not worried about you having two and three accounts. If it helps, just go yeah. for it. Um, you can do these on some of the, the kind of Revoluts and N26 and on Post. You can have one account with loads of subfolders, vaults, wallet spaces, whatever they're called in the app that you're using. Um, there's no issue. You can have a business account, one of them, and have them split out amongst that. And that can be really useful to, to, to separate them off. But I do think you need to remind yourself on a regular basis, I'm doing this because I love it. I'm doing it because I have a passion at first. I'm doing it because I'm good at it. And I'm doing it for the flexibility and the money. And then there's no priority there. You're doing it for all of those reasons. Yeah, definitely. Um, as you start to get a bit more established, there'll be things like pension that you need to, to consider. There'll be things like income protection and specified because because there's nobody's got your back now. You're on your own. And that can be a scary point, but you've taken that leap. You've done it and you've taken the the encouragement, the motivation, whatever the words are from your friend David. And that's, you know what, that's something that can be life changing for people. Yeah, it definitely has been, yeah. And he'll always be attached to it. Oh it's yeah, nice. 100%, yeah. Yeah. Is there any just passing words that you give to people who are listening in that they're thinking about doing this or they're, they're, they're maybe they're already in it? Is there any kind of passing words that you're kind of going, like our, the local enterprise was a great tip and I think that that's something people who are starting off should be considering. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, well, on the local enterprise, they also do a start your own business course and I did it in Clare and the facilitator was amazing. So I would totally recommend what's doing their, that. What's their name? Parag McElween, I think okay. his name was. Can't pronounce his surname. He's the Galway, Galway accountant, but he was good crack, so it kind of made it good fun. Um, but otherwise, I think just to get out and do it, like I said, I just regret not doing it sooner. That's mm. my only thing. Um, and, and again, I did volunteer for years in this area. And if there's any, it depends on the business plan, I suppose, but if there's any opportunities to go out and get that volunteer experience or work experience before going into business, I think that has been a real um, strong point for me, making the connections especially. That's really useful to people. Then you'd like to ask me before we wrap up? No, I think you've answered pretty much everything. Um, it was mostly around uh, having so many different bank accounts and so many different options, uh, the pension and the income protection. So I think yeah. you've pretty and much they, they touched will, on all will come. Karina, I really appreciate your time and I, I will watch with keen interest to see how this develops over the next couple of months in particular. Um, and do keep in touch with us because I know it's always a case that I'll bump into someone on the street and say, do you ever hear from that Karina one again and how's she getting on? So do, you have my number now, text us in a couple of months time and just let us know how you're getting on because we'll we'll watch this one with interest. Well, thanks Owen, I really appreciate it. Thanks Karina for coming in. Cheers. Cheers.